Good morning to the Fire Catchers Classroom. I'm Andrea with Catch the Fire Worship Flags and you are watching the Fire Catchers Classroom on November 17th. Uh, and we're discussing the glory realm. It's where you belong. And uh, so this morning we're gonna take about an hour, uh, maybe even a little less if I can get through this quickly, and, and just kind of dive into the glory realm, uh, especially as we're moving closer to, to Christmas. I know that Thanksgiving's coming up, but closer to Christmas um, when we see the glory manifest among us. And so I just wanna, before we start, I'm gonna pray uh, for this time. So Father, I thank you that we, you've given us this, this venue. I keep praying and thanking the Lord for social, social media and for just these, the technology that we can do this from across the US and Canada, it's multi-national, um, that we can do this together, that we can see and hear each other, that we can dive into your word, that we can that we can just come before you, spend an hour um, looking, at, peering into your word um, and growing together. So I bless this time, I bless the, the ones that are here and the ones, the fire catchers that will watch it later. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so, what is glory? I honestly, when, as I was, as I was preparing this, I've been, this is in connection with the glory realm connect collection that's coming out for the fire catchers. It's going to be starting. You'll get a one day pre launch, um, look at the whole collection. It'll be launched on, uh, the night 20th. Um, but so I've been, I've been preparing all this, this glory realm, stuff and looking at just delving into it being immersed in the glory and the more that I am immersed in the glory the more I understand that I don't know what it is <laughs> what is the glory so we're gonna I, I will give you my thoughts I'm gonna teach a little bit on it um, at the end of this teaching if you came thinking, I want to know what the glory is, we're going to have some ideas about it, but I don't know if I will answer that question because I think that it is a concept that I have not quite grasped. It is, it's throughout scripture. There is the word glory in the Old Testament is found 200 times, and the word glory in the New Testament. I didn't write that down. I think it's 143, quite possibly more. It's, it is listed in scripture as a word that we have quite often. And so um, I think that it bears some, some study of it and what is it and uh, trying to understand a little bit what it is. So in the Old Testament, we have the word kabod, Chavod, I think is how you say it. I'm going to butcher that, but um, it's, we found that in the Strong's H3519, and it generally means, it's the idea of, uh, there's some heaviness, um, a weight or worthiness. It's used of, it's used of God and of men. Uh, it is not a term that is only solely related to God, uh, and of men, it's the, your splendor, it, in, it includes wealth, but it is more than wealth in terms of, of financial wealth. And um, likewise, in the New Testament, we have the Greek word doxa, which of which we get the doxology. It is meaning, uh, it also means a weightiness, that there's some, it's tangible, it's tangible. So I, I know that when I go to a lot of the, when I do ministry in some of the places that I go and we ask for the glory of God to fall, that there is an actual physical um, exercise that we do and we hold and you can hold, you can feel glory come in. Uh, it is, um, uh, again, that's by the spirit, but there, it's something tangible. There's something weighty. The idea also so I have a, um, I'm getting to know a friend online and she's um, 
she's Jewish and her husband is quite academic in uh, as a Jewish scholar and so I asked him some questions and so he had some things to say about it as well and he gave me the idea that it's that it's honor that she well she actually said that it was that they related as honor and it's and if you understand that honor you can give glory to someone is that you are giving honor you are giving the glory that you have the weight that you have and you are adding it to to the one that you give glory to so we as humans give glory to god and actually scripture says that he gives glory to us he gives his weight to us so we're going to kind of look into that um just very practically the definition that i found in the dictionary of glory it's very great praise on our distinction it's the idea of a distinguished ornament or an object of pride uh, it's adoring praise of worshipful thanksgiving. It's a state of great splendor. And then uh, it also, as a noun, is the ring. So in, especially in, like right now with this, <laughs> this fluorescent light above me, I have quite the glory ha happening. So like a halo, like so in, in, in old, uh, Art, we often see, especially in Catholic art, or Orthodox art, we see the halos around people. That would be, that would be to explain their, their glory or to show their glory in a physical uh, form. I'm just, I have all my notes. I'm going to make sure that I'm getting everything. Um, I started writing it all out. Okay, so we have... So we understand that God has glory, but does man have glory as well? Uh, David, he writes in the Psalm 30, verse 12, that he writes of my glory, that God gives my glory. And then in 49, 16, also in Psalm, that glory of man can increase, meaning the wealth can increase, our riches can increase. Okay, who receives the glory? So we have, so all of this actually came about was the idea, and I've been really camping on this idea since the summer, who gets the glory and do we get glory? Is there glory for us? And this is not about that we get the glory, but it's actually where we, we belong. And, and if God lives in glory, that wherever he is is glorious, and that we are in him and that he gives us glory, it, scripture will go through that scripture does tell us he gives us glory then um, there is a thought and I grew up and hands up if I can I can see you hands up if you grew up understanding that it was uh, it was really paramount to to this basically the sin of Lucifer to to steal God's glory that there was yeah Rosie that that we get that verse, uh, Isaiah 42, 8, that God will not share his glory with another. And, and then we come into the New Testament, and I remember the teaching that said uh, from Romans 3, 23, that we all have sinned and fall short of the glory, that we don't deserve glory, so that there is this oppression that we don't deserve the glory, that we should not attain it, we should not try to attain it, and as I started to think about some of this, and in the summer, we had our identity collection, and one of the identity, uh, the flags in that collection was crowned for glory. And the spirits, the, the spirits started to talk to me even before that as I considered, should I put this into the collection? Because, because of that idea that we don't have glory, that we shouldn't have glory. And... And so when God says you are crowned for glory, then that really actually flew in the face of I shall not, I shall not, or he will not share his glory with another. So the, those are two opposing thoughts and I had to like take a look at it. So if we looked and I did share in one of the, the weeklies about this because it's, and so I've been camping on this for quite a while that, that, um, 
all of Isaiah 42 is actually talking about idols. So God will not share his glory with an idol. He will not, he will not, um, um, allow anything else to stand, to be worshiped in glory like he is. So that does not relate to us at all that it, the scripture it's, it is not talking that he will not share his glory with, with, mankind. And then also I think Romans 323, which actually I hear on teaching, very Calvinistic teaching, that we don't deserve the glory, that we all fall short of the glory, actually right in the verse itself is telling us that we actually fall short. We were intended for it, but we fell short. So it, it actually answers the, the question or it actually, yeah, it answer, answers what it's trying to oppress by saying we actually fall short. So we are intended for it. So we're, gonna, we're going to, I just kind of wanted to lay the groundwork and move uh, into the fact that um, when we talk about the glory, the, the glory realm and where you belong, that's, that's kind of what we're, we're going with this collection. And what it looks like, especially from Old Covenant to New Covenant, and what, what we can and should expect with it, and why it's important, why I've created an entire flag collection around it, because it's, a, it's an idea that's been percolating for me, and I just wanted to share some of the revelation that, that I've had in that. And, so, and also throughout the scripture, through, even through the Old Testament, um, we have under, understand that, so the, in Exodus 28, uh, it says that they decorated the priestly garments for their glory. That in Psalm 8.5, we are crowned for glory. In Proverbs 25.2, this is one of my favorite verses, that it's for the glory of God that he hides a matter, and it's the glory of kings that we search a matter out. And so um, there's a lot of a lot of teaching that we can go into rabbit trails with, and I'm going to try to keep it short. Um, a lot of this stuff I'd love to delve into deeper with you. As I was getting into my into my studies, I had to keep coming back to no, that's not <laughs> that's not the focus because I get so sidetracked when I'm studying scripture because one thing leads to another, and that's why I come back and like I actually have no idea what glory is, but I have an idea, and we're going to look at the idea. Um, it's kind of like the, where God says, where Moses, we're going to come back to this too, but where Moses says, show me your glory. And then in Exodus 33, 18, and then the first, next verse, he says, I'll show you my, I'll let my goodness pass over you. And so this correlation of, is there a correlate, is there a correlation or what is the correlation? And actually, that's one of the questions that I had asked, um, my friend's husband and, what I loved what he actually said, he said, it's the exacting definition of his being. So if glory is this, glory is a realm, glory is a noun, glory is a specific place, I think. Um, we, can, we can say all of those things are true. But if we ask to, Moses asked to see his glory, God says, I'm going to show you the exacting definition of who I am, my goodness. And then he actually writes, he says his name in that, in that passage to him. Um, so we're going to kind of, so we're going to move on to this idea. Again, we're going to bank on, uh, we're going to camp on, not bank. We're going to camp on Exodus 33, 18. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. It is such an audacious, audacious request. I, the whole thing is just a beautiful passage in it before that, that Moses and God have had an exchange and, and Moses finds favor with God. And, and then he makes an audacious request. The whole idea of follow your favor. He said, okay, if I've show, if, if you, if you're pleased with me, if I have found favor, then make this big request possible for me. 
um, like talk about timing. He had good timing. He knew when to go right for the thing that he really wanted. And I think that we can learn something from this. And this is where we're, we're going to move into the teaching today is the audacious request. I love the word audacious. And we've, I've created it into an acronym and we're going to go through the acronym of audacious because we also will be making an audacious request of the Lord. So A, the first letter is A, altar. It all starts with an altar. I can't say that the whole thing is, is um, all of the letters. There's a lot of letters as I was going through the acronym, but there's a lot of letters that I'm not sure if, it, it, if they go exactly chronologically, but it starts with the altar. And when it does actually, so here we get the, we do bring it back in uh, Isaiah 42, eight, that he will not share his glory with another because, and we're talking about idols. So we have to lay our lives down on as an altar and anything that's in it. So Psalm five, three, this is from the Passion Translation, at each sunrise, you will hear my voice as I prepare my sacrifice of prayer to you. Every morning, I lay the pieces of my life on the altar and wait for your fire to fall upon my heart. There are, there are things in our life that we need to lay down. It's easy to think of other religions, I think of Hinduism and how they have so many gods and that, that Jesus is one of their gods. We're like, oh no, they have to lay all those things down, but really make it closer to home. Like, what is it that you have to lay down? What is the altar? What, what is the thing that you have elevated above God? And I, and I'm sure that it's not just me. Um, some of the things that I constantly am actually can, where the enemy can really elevate or I, I allow the elevate. I allow to elevate above even God is is ministry. Even um, that's probably because it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's what we're supposed to do. But I am so busy doing ministry that I'm actually not ministering to God. That I'm not. That I have to lay it down again and and think that well, if I don't do this, and who's going to do it? Well, you know, God can do a lot more. <laughs> than I can do. And um, the idea, I don't know, so just think about, about that. What is it, what are the things that you need to lay down? If you want to enter, if you want to see God in his glory, if you want to ask him, show me your glory, you're going to have to lay down the things that are in, are in front of his glory. You're not going to be able to see it. He won't share it with something else. He won't share it with an idol. He will share it with you, but he will not share it with an idol. So we start there. Then we move into the, oh, the you, understanding. So here we want to talk about Jesus's perfect theology. Okay, so Proverbs 25, 2, we're going after, after understanding. God conceals the revelation of his word in the this is from the, the passion. God conceals the revelation of his word in the hiding place of his glory, but the honor of kings is revealed by how thoroughly they, how they thoroughly search out the deeper meaning of all that God says. There's a blessing in it, and it's actually to our glory that we get to, to go after the things, the revelation of God, and to understand those things. In the book, uh, the book of Hebrews, chapter five, actually all of chapter five is um, an, uh, is talking about the supremacy of of Christ, and that in five five that God glorified Him. He didn't He didn't take on the glorification Himself, but God actually granted Him the glorification. And then it says in five fourteen, "You should be mature. We should actually be already understanding this." That there's something about that there's some understanding that we are supposed to be having, that we are supposed to know already that Jesus, the supremacy of Jesus, that he is um, glorious and that, and then it follows that we are in Christ. And so that, that we should actually be going after that, that there is that, um, I think it's in Isaiah, it says, come let us reason together. I know I'm taking it out of context, but I love that verse because I'm, I'm an analytical thinker when it, 
when it comes to the Bible. I love to do the research and the more research it can seem dry, but I find to me, uh, it, it, in, it intrigues me and it, it intrig makes me intrigued to know God. It makes me really desire to go after the mysteries that it, that Paul writes uh, to the Ephesians that until now that they didn't, their the mysteries weren't revealed, but now they are revealed and that we have access to this all, that there is everything that we, all of the mysteries we can know. It is actually for us to know in Christ. So we don't have to be blind to it anymore, and we don't have to be ignorant to it anymore, and we don't have to say, um, let our experience say his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. In fact, at this point, we have the mind of Christ in us. And so it's errant to say that we can't know those things. He does reveal them. He is, he is in relationship. And if, if we're, if we are, we're no longer actually following after him, we are in him and he in us. We are closer than following him. We are as one. And so all of these things, as we move into the perfection of Christ, the things that we're talking about, um, these things will be revealed. So we'll have greater and greater understanding. I think that a lot of the glory comes in with um, identity. Now I'm getting ahead of myself. D is for doxa, and it's the law of displacement. Um, doxa just meaning the glory. So grade nine, science. Law of displacement. Only thing I remember from that is where the idea... The experiment well, that my teacher did had a beaker of rocks. No, he had um, a beaker of water, and then he put rocks in the water, in the beaker, and the water splashed out to show us the law of displacement. So in the shifting of the atmospheres uh, teaching in the, in the fire catchers, I had shared that you can occupy... You can, you can occupy different atmospheres, but you cannot not occupy the same atmosphere, two different atmospheres at the same time, because where one, where one thing was there and you bring in another thing, what was there is displaced. So it's the whole idea of light can't overcome darkness. When you flip a switch, the darkness goes. Two things cannot occur at the same time. The law of displacement with the glory, if there's a weight, I already told you that there's a weight to it. So when the darkness pushes is there, then when the glory comes, it is displaced. It's the law of displacement. And um, we have Ezekiel 10.4. The, then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub and paused over the threshold of the temple and the house was filled with the cloud and the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. So what was there? We also have the, uh, the picture of, of Isaiah 6 where the, where the robe was filled the temple. So what was there is now has been pushed out. So when, when, when I go do warfare, when we go over regions and we worship over regions, um, I, I've, I've learned this as a, as a warfare technique, actually, the law of displacement, is that when you move into a, a dark place and you worship, such as what we've done when I've done ministry, worship ministry trips, instead of, you know, I, quite honestly, instead of binding anything or or praying against what's there, we just simply call down the glory of the Lord. And when I'm ministering to in the New Age uh, communities or where we go, those things, we simply call down the glory of the Lord, and it pushes out what's there. So I don't we don't have to fight that. We can just be in the glory. We bring in the presence. We bring in the presence. We bring in the glory of the presence that where that we what we carry, and um, and I think I believe that we actually have that when we come. It's just being aware of it, understanding when we're when we're praying for it. Um, 
it helps me have a visual. I don't know. Hands up to when you're praying for things that you know to be true in the spirit already, does it help actually just visualizing it? Yeah. For me, I, that's it, it. I, so when we call down the glory, it's, I'm literally like feeling this cool thing fall down. Um, there was a, and I think it's the realization or the manifestation. I think that the glory is already there, but it's actually us walk, stepping into it. Um, and I say that because, so I was at Bethel a few years ago, uh, and they were having, they were doing a, some work. So a lot of their worship nights, it was happening frequently enough that, that it was exciting. And the, there was a glory cloud that came and the, sorry, my husband just came into the room. Give him a second. He's trying to find his tools for the, he's fixing, that's, he's, he's fixing the PRV valve, which I don't know, means nothing to me, but he's fixing the thing. And that's what I'm truly grateful for today is the fact that I have a husband that can do all that stuff. Okay. So in the glory, so I was at Bethel. Worship was really amazing. And um, I had my eyes closed and then, and then I opened and nothing was there. And then I opened my eyes and I, the glory, there was a glory cloud all around us. And what, I thought there was no difference between the moment that it was there and the moment that it, that it wasn't there and then the moment that it was there, which tells me that the glory is actually all around us. We just got to see it manifest in that moment. And, uh, and so as new covenant believers, as believers with Christ, that Christ dwells in us, that that is, that is what we walk around in that we are surrounded by it. And so there's this law of displacement. So when you step in, um, Christ goes with you, you bring light, you bring light where you go. A, and the audacious, A, the second A is ask, ask. What a concept, <laughs> what a concept. Exodus thirty three eighteen. 18, Moses, most audacious request in all of scripture, I believe. Show me your glory. And I love it because he says, if I found favor. Now, here's the thing. You have found favor. You have God's favor. That there is never a time that you don't have God's favor. That you can ask. Ask. Um, so Moses had an audacious request. He asked. James 4, 2 says that all, and all the time you don't obtain what you want because you won't ask God for it. God is, is, so good that he will always answer you and he will always answer you with the best. A son asks, but a servant doesn't. And so I think that that really falls um, into understanding, in, into understanding our identity that we can ask. Moses knew when to ask for when he, when he had the favor, he knew. And so you are, we're daughters that we can ask. And so if we want to see his glory, if we want to see the magnificence of his being, the goodness of his being, the exacting being, then we can, we can ask. Covenant is our see. Um, Hebrews 8, 6 says, but now Jesus the Messiah has accepted the priestly minister ministry which far surpasses theirs since he is the catalyst of a better covenant which contains far more wonderful promises that we have I'm just gonna make sure that, that we have a new and better covenant that everything that was before is um, obsolete and we have something new and it's new covenant Moving pretty yeah. um, And the, the thing about this covenant, as opposed to the other five covenants, the other four covenants that we see in the new in the Old Testament, is that this this one can't be messed up. We can't it can't be revoked. It won't be 
it won't be denied we there is and the reason being is because jesus made it with god so the jesus had to come as a man he came as a man and a god so that he could enter into the covenant with god as a man so so i mean i would love to actually do a full teaching on this because it's so it's the start of everything in our in our christian walk is that we are new covenant believers not just new testament believers but new covenant believers and the cut what the covenant gives us the covenant gives us the right to stand before god the right to be with god that we are actually in christ um and and the covenant is that we we are entered into the covenant because of what so if god is here and Jesus is here, Jesus is man, and they enter a covenant. We are in the middle. So we will, Jesus has, is perfect. He has never sinned. He can, he can never mess up the covenant. So the covenant will never, ever go by the wayside in the way that the Abrahamic covenant and the Davidic covenant did. So Jesus fulfills those covenants. The Mosaic covenant was obsolete because it was not, it was a different type of covenant. But that's why we don't have the law. We have the new covenant, which is higher. And the fact that we, it also allows with Christ dwelling in us that we are able to fulfill the covenant. I think I'm not explaining that well enough because there it is so big, but I'm going to actually leave it there. We're, we'll talk more about this. And I just, so just, one of the things I didn't share in the weekly this week, and I don't know what it is, as I was as I was preparing, um, one in three flags were sold were the covenant flags, which tells me God is actually really got His finger on this that that there is an understanding that we should have a better understanding about the covenant because uh, there's a lot of teaching, and I think I grew up with it, and even some of the things that the um, the that we that we, we show that shows up in our Calvinist thinking is that um, um, sorry I lost my train of thought the thing that shows up is that there's a little bit of the law still but we don't have the law the New Testament talks nothing about the law it says that that actually was been finished and that we have a higher law that we have actually a higher standard, but the fact that we have a higher standard can be lived out because we are made perfect forever as we're being made holy, Hebrews 10, 14. That we can do this, that we have the mind of Christ, Philippians 2, 5, that we, um, that we have every spiritual blessing, um, Ephesians 1, 3, that we have all of these things that we can fulfill the, co the, coven the new covenant which brings us into the next one, I, identity. And what shall we say about identity? This, this is my life message. Um, I, everything changes. Everything changes with our new identity. Um, 2 Corinthians 5, 4, 5, 17. Now, if anyone is enfolded, this is in the, new, the passion, and I love the way that they, if anyone is enfolded into Christ, he has become an entirely new creation. All that is related to the old order has vanished. Behold, everything is fresh and new. And I think this again relates back to the, to the covenant. And then he talks about our, our new ministry of reconciliation is to share with the others what we have in Christ. That if anyone is enfolded, don't you just love that whole, that idea of being in, in full. I get the vision of, of, um, being enfolded in a hug and just being kind of squished. I also get the idea of being enfolded um, when you're folding eggs into a batter and you're mixing it up and it's becoming a new thing. And I mean, we are completely new creation. We're completely new. Our identity. So our identity is that of new. I mean, we can talk. We can talk. We can talk everything again about that for what we talked about last time. I taught on the identity angel. July, September, August, one of those. 
and the fire catchers. And then John 17, 22, for the glory you have given me, I have given them so that they will be joined together as one. That, so what he, what God has given him, I told you, we already talked about in Hebrews 8, that God the Father bestowed on him the glory. Jesus did not, he did not demand it or, or because he was man, he did not demand it, but God put it on him as man. And then Jesus is praying. This is in the garden, um, John 17, when he prays for the believers that for the glory that you've given me, I give to them so that they will be joined together. So it's a, it's the, a way that we're joined together. It, our identity comes from Christ's sacrifice. 10, 14 says for the, by his one sacrifice, we are made perfect forever as we are being made holy. And then uh, Colossians 1, 27, that we talks about the hope of glory that is Christ in you. So these are, these are small snippets of what our identity means. And, and, you know, we can talk more and more about this. Um, there's, su it's such another, it's another big topic. Like the new covenant and the identity is everything that we have in Christ. Um, and then all of that is that we overcome. We are overcome. Um, that's our O. And again, coming back to the law of displacement, we are overcome. We are overcomers because of the, dis of the law of displacement. When we step in, when we step into the realm, when we actually step into understanding our identity in, in the glory realm, which is where we, that's where God dwells, that's where we dwell. That, and it is ever increasing. I'm going to read Ephesians 3.16. And I pray that he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your inmost being with his divine and might, might and explosive, explosive power. Let me read that again because I see. And I pray that he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your in, innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. That it's increase that it's ever increasing, and that it is our um, it is how we will overcome. Uh, and the, that we move from glory to ever increasing glory. That we have the King of Glory, that as we as relayed in Ma in Psalm twenty four. The King of Glory, who is strong and mighty, that we will, um, that these are how that these are how we will overcome. That it is through His glory, in His glory, nothing overcomes His glory. We that's where we are, um, and we will go from glory to ever increasing glory. That we will go from from winning one battle to ever increasing our battle. Our our battle victories. Finally, we come to, well, not finally, united. U is for united, audacious, the last, second, last letter, uh, that we are united with Christ. So first off, we had in the Old Testament that he would simply come and dwell with us, Emmanuel, God with us. And we're moving into the Christmas season when God, when Christ came and we sing it's actually one of my favorite carols when it's sung really, really well, uh, Emmanuel, and um, the idea of God coming with us. And as I was pondering this, actually, that's not, that's not entirely true with the covenant and with our new identity. He's actually in us. So it's not just God with us. He's actually in us. In us is, in us is better than with us. Um, so in the, in the Old Testament, we have that he, in Isaiah 9, 
think, um, that is, he talks about, met his name, Emmanuel, God with us. John 1, 14 says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Uh, it actually does speak about his glory coming down and coming down into the world. But it goes further. It goes further. So this is in, in his death and his resurrection. That's actually when, and it, with, when the birth of the new covenant, through his death, that's when we, then he moves into us. Through the spirit, he moves into us. So it is better than him being in us. We, it is uh, around us. He is in us. Um, and again, reading from John 17, 22, for the glory you have given me, I have given them so that they will be joined together as one. And then finally, we come down to S and that we are, that there is, we are surrounded, that there is nothing, um, it's never again going to be the same when, when the glory comes and we have uh, Luke 2 verse 9 and behold the angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone all around them there is never ever a time that you are not in the glory realm that you are this is the place that you dwell it is the place where he is it is the place where you belong so you are surrounded and I keep thinking about this song surrounded by Michael W. Smith we're surrounded, we're surrounded, we're surrounded. And so this is, so we've gotten the audacious. So we've had, um, all, so it starts at the altar. We get an understanding. We have the, the, the law of displacement with the doxa. We ask, we have a covenant, we have a new covenant. We have an identity. We are overcome. Uh, we are overcomers, not sorry, we are overcome. We are overcomers, we're united, and we are surrounded with him and so this Christmas season as we if this um, whatever has struck you if there's anything that has struck you be audacious be audacious in your pursuit of God's glory it's where he dwells and it's where you belong and um, after I thought of the whole thing I thought well audacious was such a long word I could have said bold and that would have been a lot shorter <laughs> However, um, I think that it all, I think that it all works. And I actually, so I wrote my notes out. <laughs> then I had my secondary notes, which I totally, we didn't get to, but that's okay. Um, we're going to end it there. It's actually 10 o'clock. So I'm going to, um, because I, I can't do the technology, but I, I'll, I'm going to, I'm going to I want to chat and ask some, uh, get you to ask some questions, but I'm going to shut it off here, the recording, and um, just say thank you. And Lord, help us to understand even more about your glory. Help us to understand what it is that we get with the glory, that we, how we're transformed in the glory, how you are ever increasing, how you are, how you show, show up in the glory, and that, um, that healing happens, that we move from, from one uh, glorious victory to, to the next glorious victory, that we're constantly moving um, upwards and that we're constantly having a greater understanding of who you are and who we are, that Jesus, your perfect theology and that you are glorious in it. And that we, under, that we can understand even greater depths of who we are. And so I bless the, those that will listen, those that have been here, um, thank you, Jesus. Amen.